Hey, it's Professor Streeter, and in this video we're going to talk about the thesis of hedonism, which formed the focus of our readings for this week and of the slideshow. We didn't get to the second half of the slideshow during class, so I thought I'd look at those slides with you and talk about the history of hedonism and the basic idea leading up to a discussion of Heathwood's article, Faring Well and Getting What You Want, and how that relates to the idea of hedonism, and also sort of set up the argument that he makes, which you're writing about this week in your homework. Okay, so I'm going to start the slideshow in a minute, but recall that hedonism, the basic idea is that happiness, understood as pleasure and the absence of pain, the life of pleasure, the life of happiness, is the best life for us, and that happiness and pleasure, or the absence of pain, these are the only things that we desire for their own sake. The only intrinsic value, the only thing that, that is worth desiring for its own sake is happiness or pleasure. Everything else that we do, everything else that we desire, everything else that we value, everything else we consider good, its goodness, right? must relate in some way to the goodness of happiness. It must either be a means to happiness or itself a part of happiness or a component of happiness. It must itself be a means to pleasure or a form of pleasure. Otherwise, it has no value to us. Otherwise, it, 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 we can't explain what it's good for or it, we can't explain its goodness except in relation to happiness and pleasure. Okay? So that's the basic idea. Not that happiness and pleasure are valuable, but that they are the only things that have intrinsic value. All right, so let's uh, come back to the slideshow, and this is where we ended up with a picture of the first hedonist, or you know, this idea uh, that happiness and pleasure is the greatest good goes back to Epicurus, and here he is. He founded a school called the Garden School of Philosophy. He actually had students in ancient Athens in the uh, around you know 341 when he was born. He died in 270. So toward you know the last uh, 30 years of his life, he was a, a teacher of philosophy in ancient Athens, and his school was called the Garden School partly because he loved gardening, and he believed that gardening was a kind of model or a, a, a kind of image of the good life, right? The gardener embodied all of the things that he thought um, a happy person uh, uh, embodied. <clears throat> so what is his basic approach to the good life? Or to, to if, if happiness is the good we're seeking or pleasure is the good we're seeking, what is the kind of cure to our misery, right? Many of us are miserable. We all want to be happy, but we find ourselves living a life of misery. Well, why is that? This is what Epicurus was trying to write about and understand in the letter to Minotius that you read. And he proposes what has come to be called the four-part cure, the four-part cure for human misery. Sort of four keys or four principles, uh, four basic principles that if you kind of adopt them and live by them, um, um, you will achieve uh, the highest good in life, which is pleasure, happiness. So the first has to do with our beliefs and our attitudes toward God. Epicurus thought that we, uh, in his time, people had misconceptions of God as um, a being who took an interest in our lives in such a way that, uh, that God was in a position to punish us for the wrongs that we did. Um, from Epicurus's point of view, this is a misplaced fear um, based on a misconception of God. Uh, so part of the, the cure is to, is to form the right beliefs about God. Um, and once we understand the, the true nature of God, we will see that we no longer have a, a reason to fear God's wrath. And this will take away one of the main causes of human misery, right? This anxiety. Um, fear of being punished by God. This does not lead to a happy life, he thinks. We also worry too much about death. We believe that death is bad, that death will cause us pain, but he makes an argument that um, uh, if, we, if we rightly understand what death is, we'll see that we have no reason to worry about it. And again, it will take away that mental anxiety um, that causes us pain. 
he also believes that many of the things that we desire that are also necessary for us that we really need are pretty easy to get right decent food decent housing uh companionship friendship um exercise right the the, the simple things are pretty easy to get we end up desiring a life of luxury but we don't need it he thinks and so if we can convince ourselves or, or come to see that the, 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 the truly good things in life are pretty simple and easy to get, we will stop desiring luxuries and other things that we don't really need. Similarly, we spend too much time worrying about pain that is actually not that hard to endure. So, I mean, for example, back pain or, you know, muscle pain or certain kinds of physical pain. As we get older, our bodies get more achy. Uh, you know, we, we, we're, we get older and, and we can't do all the things that we want to do, but we, we fear that too much. It's actually a lot easier to endure than, than, than we think. Um, so most of the bad things that happen to us, right, um, aren't, aren't as terrible as we think they are. All right? This is at least the argument that he tries to make. And so um, we shouldn't spend our time worrying, uh, trying to avoid those pains, those painful experiences, because um, that just creates a lot of anxiety and worry and stress, right? So in, in essence, right, Epicurus thinks that the cause of our misery is in us. It has to do with our attitudes and our beliefs, our beliefs about God, our beliefs about death, our beliefs about what's genuinely desirable, and our beliefs about what's genuinely undesirable. Um, and if we can change our beliefs and our attitudes, then we will take away the cause of our misery. So that's, uh, in essence, his hedonistic approach. I mean, here's a quotation from his letter. We must also reflect that of desires, some are natural, others are groundless. This is what I was speaking about in the, the third part of the cure here. Oops. Excuse me. Um, what's good is easy to get. What's terrible is easy to endure. Uh, we have to see that some of our desires are natural, right? They belong to our nature. Others are artificial. We don't really need to desire those things. And of the natural desires, some are necessary as well as natural, and some natural only. So first we have to sort of separate out the desires that belong to our nature, right? A good life is one in which we live according to our nature, Epicurus thinks, uh, in, in which we pursue desires that belong to our nature. Um, that's an interesting claim. But among those desires, not all of them are necessary. We can live without them. We can thrive without them. And so of the necessary desires, some are necessary if we are to be happy, some if the body is to be rid of uneasiness, some if we are even to live. Uh, so think about that. Well, among the desires that we have, which ones are necessary to our happiness? Um, which ones are necessary to um, uh, eliminating uneasiness in our body? Which ones are necessary to survival, to, to, to a thriving life? Uh, those are the desires that we ought to pursue, all right? Um, he who has a clear and certain understanding of these things will direct every preference and aversion towards securing health of body and tranquility of mind, seeing that this is the sum and end of a happy life. So this is Epicurus's conception of happiness. It has to do with tranquility of mind, right? Um, which is another way of saying, d d distinguishing between desires that are necessary to our happiness and desires that are unnecessary, and pursuing only those desires that, that are necessary. So if we give up on the on the things that we don't on desiring the things that we don't really need, we will achieve a kind of inner tranquility, um, and this is the key to a happy life. Okay, so again, happiness understood as a life of attitudinal pleasure, right? A, a positive attitude toward one's life. For Epicurus, that means a kind of inner tranquility, where I'm not full of anxiety about getting things that I don't really need or losing things that aren't that hard to lose. Uh, I'm not full of anxiety of, of, you know, fearing death, fearing God's wrath. Um, so how do I achieve that state? Well, again, by noticing that many physical pleasures are unnecessary. Of course, we have to eat, but we don't have to eat um, fancy food every night, right? Um, uh, of course, um, you know, we, we, we want to um, socialize, but we don't need to, you know, party all, all night every day of the week. Um, so, right, so, so, so many of the physical pleasures that we, that we desire are ones that aren't necessary 
to our inner tranquility, right? In fact, they, 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 they undermine our tranquility and we can live well without desiring them. Why does he think this? Because these are fleeting sensations that lead to an excessive desire for more, right? This is the thing about physical pleasure. Once we eat one piece of chocolate, we want more. Um, it, it, it's not that eating chocolate is bad, but everything in moderation. And so once we see that physical pleasures are, are uh, 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 produce more inner tranquility, the more we moderate them, um, right? Then we're on the road to living a happy life. <laughs> um, ultimately, right? Uh, what happens when we have an excessive desire for more in terms of like excessive desire for more, 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 uh, fancy food, more sex, um, more, uh, more partying, um, we, we, we experience in the end more pain than pleasure because we have this sort of prolonged experience of pain in the form of mental anxiety about loss. We become too worried about losing the object of our desire. And so the pleasure of eating fancy food, right, gives rise to more, more pain than pleasure because we, we, we experience mental anxiety about losing access to the fancy food. Or, okay, so that's kind of the idea. Um, Inner tranquility then depends on not desiring these kinds of sensations that are not necessary to human thriving and that just lead to an excessive desire for more and anxiety about losing the object of our desire or losing the capacity to, to, to have those sensations. So that's, that's Epicurus' idea of the happy life, right? It's a life of inner tranquility. Um, again, I talked about this, uh, um, the, the, the so what causes us to be so miserable is the fear of God's wrath and the fear of death. And he makes arguments to the effect that we don't, don't have reason to fear either, right? God is unchanging. God is all, 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 all is perfect. And it's not, not consistent with God's perfection that God takes an interest in us and punishes us for what we do, right? That doesn't belong to God's nature. Similarly, so we shouldn't fear God's wrath. Death is not something we'll experience. So we only have reason to experience certain types of pain that are hard to endure, but since we won't experience death, we have nothing to fear. Those are arguments he makes. Um, and then the other two parts of his cure, um, we end up having too much desire for mostly physical pleasures, excessive physical pleasures, uh, things that are hard to get, right? And that cause more pain than pleasure in the end overall. Uh, and we also um, tend to spend too much time trying to avoid painful experiences that really aren't that bad in the end, right? Okay, so that's Epicurus. Um, I'm going to pause now, and I'll make uh, another video about Mill and lead into the to the to the part about um, hedonism from Schaefer Landau's chapter. So the next video will focus on what Schaefer Landau says about the attractions of hedonism. And, um, and end with a thought about Heathwood and his article that you're writing about for your homework. Okay, thanks.